Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor at now the 36th best financial advisor in all of America, according to USA Today. We're extremely excited about that. We went from 66 to 36. Hope you'll check us out at jazzwealth.com. You know the drill. First of all, I got a quick shout out to Don S. Sent in these really cool dollars. Uh, if you don't know, we're big fans of unique currencies around here. This is a Florida gold back. And uh, we're actually building a wall now, a new set. Uh, we're going to have all the currencies that everybody sent in. If you want to send in some sort of foreign currency or something, just sign your name on it there and we'll put it up on the wall. But I thought that was really cool. It's good to basically exchange for gold. Uh, I'll try to get it in there so you can see it. Super cool. Love it. And thank you, Don S. Hey, we're going to dive into a little bit of a more of a study than what we've been doing here. When's the best time to make your contribution to your 401k, if you can control it, uh, your IRA, which obviously you can control. Uh, so we're going to go over some data here, let you come up with a decision just based on the data. I'm not going to say anything. You guys will probably just get it, but let's see what we got. The first thing we want to look at, we've done this before, which is just the distribution of returns in the S&P uh, by day, right? So how often do we trade basically flat? Most of the time, the market generally gains a very small, on average, gains a small fraction of a percent per day. Well, you can see why. Well, the majority of our days are very, very small days. They're very, very small down days, very, very small up days, right? We have, this is from zero to a half a percent, by the way, it didn't come up in there. Uh, so from a half a percent on to a 1%, right? We don't have as many days. If you want to go way out here, how often do we have a 9% day? Well, there's just one in the last 30 years. How often do we have a 9% down day? Uh, one, right? So you can see it's very rare for these outlier events. And this is just a standard distribution chart for the S&P. Now, if we look at returns by the day of the week, here's what you got, right? Going back 30 years, average return on a Monday is basically what the average return is any day. Uh, Tuesday ranks in first place here. And that's, to be fair, it's because of a phenomenon known as turnaround Tuesday. You ever heard of that before? Where they'll say, you know, uh, it's a turnaround Tuesday. I don't know. I was trying to make something out of that. There's really nothing there. Um, that is it. Now, the way we can tell that, if we look at the the top gains on Tuesday, Tuesday has the biggest gains. So if we look back over the 30 year time period there, here's October 28th in 2008. You could see some COVID dates inside of there, some dot com areas. And then, of course, hopefully you can see the, um, the height of the move there. So, uh, Tuesday typically is uh, those bigger moves is what skews this average a little bit. And it's just, you know, turn around Tuesday. As you work through the rest of the week, you could see, that it, it kind of falls apart there, right? Fridays tend to be pretty boring there, almost perfectly flat. Um, we're only rounding to the hundreds place here. Now, the reason that we can look at Turnaround Tuesday and say, wow, is that really the best day that I want to invest? Well, you might be scared. You say, well, I like to buy on the way down, not on the way up. Well, if you look at the percentage of time that Tuesday is positive, Tuesday actually ranks as the worst day. Only 51% of the time is Tuesday positive. How can that be? Well, we have those outlier days that skew the average a little bit. Wednesday tends to be the best performer there. So, so far we're looking at if you'd like to be in the market, you'd like your deposit to be in on a Monday or Tuesday, right? Um, you might argue that if you want like no anything that you would choose a Friday. Most people do not choose Friday. Um, even if you say, hey, my paycheck, right? Uh, I get paid. It goes into my 401k. Technically, you get invested on a Monday. Most people don't choose Friday because of, well, why? If you have news happening over the, or at the end of the week, why would you want to, you know, take your shot over the weekend and see if things are going to get better or worse? That's the typical response that we see. Uh, but anyways, those are the percentage of a positive returns Wednesday ranking actually the best. One thing I like to point out is the number of negative days on a particular day. This now goes back to that Tuesday that we talked about. It has the most negative days. It doesn't mean that they're the big down days, but it means it has the most negative days. It is the uh, obviously positive the least amount of time. That makes perfect sense. And we know that it is those top Tuesday gains that actually skew everything. So it's like, ah, all right, what do we do? So that's the days of the week. Uh, let's wrap this up by looking at the returns by the day of the month. Now, this isn't going to look like a whole lot here, but what we're trying to do is say, all right, is there a better time of the month to invest your money? And it actually goes in order. The If you want to buy on the strongest moves, then you would look in the first third of the month. Break, the, break it up by 10 days. 
So the strongest moves happen in the first bulk, uh, uh, first third of the month. The second best strongest moves happen in the second third of the month. As you get into that last third, it's really kind of getting skewed a little bit here, but we have more negative days if you like buying on dips and we have the lowest return. And I don't mean to say like, hey, why would I want to invest with the lowest return? I mean to say, if you like to buy things when they're falling, some people like to buy momentum and you would be in the first third of the month. You would be riding the coattails of, you know, the action at the beginning of the month. Um, if you like to buy discounts or the chance at discounts, then you're going to look at the latter part of the month. Now, notice that the first day of the month ranks as the best on average. Why do you think that is? How many people take their dollars and put them in on the first of the month, right? From your paycheck or whatever it is, however you're scheduled to do it. So this was just not meant to be like a long video, but just try to highlight some of the data in the market and let you come to the decision that you're comfortable with. Are you a momentum person or are you a discount person? There are people on both sides of the fence, but we are the types of advisors that like to share data instead of saying, oh, well, my dog pissed on the carpet this morning and no, you can't retire because I'm in a bad mood. Ah, I don't like that. We want to use the data. So we do that with both our investments, which are fund uh, expense-free funds that we actually build here. And then any planning and wealth management that we do for you. We're a good fit for everybody of all sizes. We do not discriminate based on your account size. So feel free to move on over from whoever is not treating you right to jazzwealth.com and have a great rest of your day.